Tigers. You guys, I don't know if any of y'all are new to this class, but I'm Jeffrey Chen, and I'm one of two of your um, SI leaders. And I'm guessing since y'all are here today, y'all know that your exam is in two days. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm really sorry for the late start. The the door was locked, and then the printer broke, and so. We had made like 150 copies, but there were like 250 of y'all, so I'm sorry for the really late start. But we're going to get through this. We're not going to end at five, but we're going to get through this. And also, we have this. This is going to be recorded. I've tried this like four times and it never works, but maybe this time it's going to work. But um, it's going to pick up everything y'all say, so if y'all want to be able to hear it, try to stay quiet. Okay, thank you. That's perfect. Okay. If you have questions outside of class, my email is up here. Um, we also have a Facebook group too. So feel free to email me outside of class. And this is designed so you're going to get the maximum effect by staying the entire time. I know people, I know they get kind of long, but people tend to leave, some people will leave early and then they'll miss an entire section and try to fill it in from a friend. And it's never the same as hearing it in person. So I encourage you to stay in for sure. For sure, we're gonna be done by six, I promise. Yeah. I promise, I have to be somewhere at six, so we're gonna be done for sure. Do you have a date? Okay, so um, today, just so I have time control, we're gonna start with photosynthesis. And then, um, so let's start on the second page, and it says, Jeffrey Chen's biology, photosynthesis to go, and it's a horizontal page. So it's kind of corny, but it's designed so you should have most of what you need on these two go pages. You know, like when you go to a restaurant and you order to go. Yeah, so you'll have these if you want to look if you want to look over this on the bus or something, you know, it's convenient and like in one place. So let's start with photosynthesis and feel free to ask me um, to slow down or if you can't see something, it's hard to look at the screen and talk at the same time. So let me know if you can't see anything. Okay. So let's start and so for photosynthesis and respiration, you really want to be able to get the big picture of all the components, but also be able to relate it to other concepts, right? And tonight we're gonna try to do that. So y'all are at a huge advantage, huge advantage over people who aren't here. And again, it's 50 multiple choice questions, 90 minutes, and I wish y'all good luck on your second midterm. And this is probably the last time I'll see you before spring break, so I hope you all have a great spring break. Stay safe. Okay, so starting with photosynthesis. Okay, what's the overall result? Overall energetic result? Right, so the overall energetic result. You start with what? Light energy, light energy is converted to what? Yeah, to potential energy stored in what? Yeah, stored in the chemical bonds of glucose. Right, so that's the overall goal of photosynthesis, right? And if we want to break it down, photosynthesis is made up of what? Let's go really general. What are the two major parts of photosynthesis? Light dependent reactions. Right, and with these, make sure you can figure out where they are, right? Where do the light dependent reactions occur? <coughs> on the thylakoid membrane, on the thylakoid membrane. Okay. Um, what is produced at the end of the light dependent reaction? What are the products? ATP and NADPH. Right. Once you're done with the light dependent reaction on the thylakoid membranes, you produce ATP. NADPH, right? Are these short-term or long-term energy storages? Short-term, right? So if you want to store it long-term, you want to convert it to glucose, right? So 
After the light dependent reactions, you're going to move into the light independent reactions. All right, and where do these occur? In the stroma, in the stroma of the chloroplast, right? And you're taking what and producing what? Yeah, you start with the ATP and NADPH and you produce glucose, right? And glucose is long-term energy storage, long-term. Okay, any questions so far? So we're just setting the scene. And again, you want to make sure you know these big picture ideas, right? Don't get lost in the small details. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, so continuing on, let's look at the second box, which is a photosystem, right? So what is contained
energy is released, and that energy, that energy excites a neighboring electron to a higher energy level. Right? And that happens over and over and over until what happens? <coughs> until an electron in the reaction center is excited, right? This goes on and on and on until an electron in the reaction center is excited. Any questions so far? Okay. What is this process known as? This process is known as Resonance, right? Resonance. The exciting and releasing of energy as it's being passed on from electron to electron, okay? So up to this point now, at the reaction center, we have an electron that has been excited. What happens to that electron? It's actually passed to the primary <coughs> electron acceptor, right? Up to now, we haven't been passing on electrons. We've only been passing on energy, right? Now we've physically passed this electron to the primary electron receptor, right? So this electron is physically passed to the primary electron receptor. Okay? Any questions? Okay, so now the electron has been physically passed. Now the reaction center is missing what? The reaction center is missing an electron. The primary electron receptor has an electron, right? So what's the overall energetic result of a photosystem? Energetic result of a photosystem. Light energy is converted to what? Potential energy stored in the excited electron held by the primary electron receptor, right? So, light energy is converted to potential energy stored in the excited electron held by the primary electron receptor. All right, so as you're going through, be able to break it down into steps, right? What's the energetic result of the entire process? What's the energetic result of non-cyclic flow, cyclic flow? Photosystems, right? So be able to differentiate the different processes. Any questions? Okay, and again, where is this occurring? Where on the chloroplast? All of this is occurring on the thylakoid cord membrane, right? Okay, any questions before we move on? Okay, so let's move to the next box, which is non cyclic flow, right? So we know that there are two different types of flow non-cyclic flow and cyclic flow. <coughs> so let's start with let's start with cyclic flow, okay? That one's a little bit easier. So the one on the right, we're gonna start with that one. Okay, so cyclic flow. This involves what photosystem? Just photosystem one, right? It only involves PS1. What reaction center is involved? P700, right? P700. Okay. Okay. So up to now, what has happened? We just finished the photosystem, right? So at the end of the photosystem phase, where is the energy held? Yeah, it's held in the electron held by the primary electron receptor, right? So that's where we are right now. Now let's start cyclic flow. What happens in cyclic flow? That electron is passed from transport molecule to transport molecule, right? So that electron is passed from transport molecule to transport molecule. 
Okay, so it's physically passed. What is released as that molecule, as that electron is passed? What is released? Energy is released, right? So energy is released. Okay, this next part's really important. What does that energy do? That energy is used to actively transport, actively transport hydrogen ions from where to where? From the stroma to the thylakoid space. From the stroma to the thylakoid space. <coughs> Okay. Does that directly produce ATP? No, not yet, right? This energy was used to actively transport the ions. What does that produce? That produces a concentration gradient. Gradient of hydrogen ions, right? So the energy released from electron flow directly produces a concentration gradient. <laughs> right, so this energy produces the concentration gradient. What happens next? Now you have a concentration gradient, so that concentration gradient directly powers what process? The concentration gradient powers chemiosmosis. Chemiosmosis. And what does chemiosmosis produce? ATP. So chemiosmosis is the process where you produce ATP. Okay, any questions? Okay, so the energy produces the concentration gradient, and that concentration gradient produces ATP. And also remember this, right? It's actively transported from the stroma to the thylakoid space, not the other way around, right? Any questions about cyclic flow? What happens to that electron that's passed? Eventually it's returned to <coughs> P700, right? That electron is returned to P700. So that's why it's called cyclic flow, okay? So, what's the overall energetic result of cyclic flow? Okay, so potential energy stored in the electron held by the primary electron receptor is converted to what? Converted to? Yeah, potential energy stored in ATP, right? Be able to make, generate these sentences because on Tuesday's exam, you're gonna see a lot of words, right? So you're gonna have to remember the individual processes, right, of each step. If you didn't get a copy, a couple of <coughs> So next we're going to move on to this lead box, non-cyclic flow. Okay, this one's a bit more complicated, right? So let's break it down. Where do we start with? Where, where did the photosystem end? Right, so energy was held by an electron held by the primary electron receptor, right? So that's where we ended. Non-cyclic flow involves what? Photosystems. Two photosystems, right? PS2 and PS1, what's the order? PS2 and then you go to PS1. Okay? 
what reaction center is tied to PS2? P680. What photosystem is tied to PS1? P700. Right? And where does non-cyclic flow occur? Thought of membrane, just like cyclic flow.
between PS2 and PS1. Where do you produce NADPH? After PS1, right? Okay. So P680 gave up an electron a long time ago, right? Where does it get its electron back? From water. So the breakdown of water produces the electron that replaces the one lost at P680. Okay? So that's the chemical, that's the chemical result of non-cyclic flow, right? The breakdown of water. Okay? Breakdown of water is the chemical result. What is the energetic result of non-cyclic flow? Right? So potential energy stored in an electron held by the primary electron receptor is converted to what? What did we just make? ATP and NADPH. Converted to potential energy held by ATP and NADPH. Right? Don't forget the NADPH. Right? That's the energetic result. Yes. Yeah, there's no chemical result for cyclic flow. Okay, any questions? non single flow. A lot more is happening, right? So make sure you know what's going on. <coughs> yes. Okay, any questions about non single flow? Okay. Okay, so up to now, everything we've talked about was part of what? Was part of the light dependent reactions, right? The photosystem, cyclic flow, and non cyclic flow all happened where? On the thalamoid membrane, right? So up to now, what if, what's the overall energetic result of the light dependent reactions? You've gone from light energy to energy stored in. ATP and NADPH, right? Okay. Now we're going to move on to the light independent reactions, and we're going to fill in this box, which is the Calvin cycle. Okay, so this is the light independent reactions. occurs in the stroma. Okay. What happens in the Calvin cycle? Okay, CO2. Where did the CO2 come from? The atmosphere. From the atmosphere. Combines with what? RUBP to produce a six carbon compound. How many carbons do you have in CO2? You have one carbon. How many carbons do you have in RUBP? Five, right? So that gives you a total of six. This compound is really unstable, so it immediately breaks down into what? Two molecules of PGA. Right? Let's backtrack a little bit. What was the enzyme that made this reaction? RUBP carboxylase. <coughs> RUBP carboxylase, right? Okay, so now we have two molecules of PGA, and that two molecules of PGA is converted to what? Glyceraldehyde phosphate. I can't remember if you used that acronym class, the G3. No? Okay, never mind. So PGA is converted to glyceraldehyde phosphate. <coughs> what is needed for that conversion? ATP and NADPH. So it needs ATP 
and need 